uh, Carla Fernandez Parker here with us, all the way from Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, and I guess you know, they came by a bus, so they had a, a great trip here. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, let us down. No, it's kidding. Come on, Gary. I already said that. I mentioned that one already. But uh, you know, Carla is, is a bilingual, uh, bicultural marketing expert who brings the brands to life in Hispanic and multicultural communities by creating culturally relevant brand engagement with consumers where they live, work, pray, and play. You know, I first uh, met uh, Carla and, uh, uh, and connected with Carla when she had her ad agency in San Antonio. And she was, uh, you know, a rising star in the business. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, years later, uh, it, she turns out to, to be uh, working alongside of uh, Jose Villa and Census, which is probably one of the leading multicultural agencies in the country now. Jose was with us this past spring. And so he's a very talented uh, uh, marketer and uh, he's building this empire, if you will, with Census for this amazing uh, uh, group. So uh, we're gonna bring uh, Carla up here. There's, there's a lot more on her on her um, resume here, uh, working with some of the you know outstanding agencies, uh, really iconic, the, the Sosa Bromley Aguilar Associates, you know they come to mind because you know they they kind of led the way in this industry. Uh, you know the 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 advertising, Hispanic uh, advertising industry. This isn't an old industry. This is a relatively new industry. It's a couple of decades old, really. Uh, what we're seeing in here, this isn't uh, saying this agency's been around, but there's no Hispanic marketing in the 30s or 40s, there was nothing. You know, they didn't know. I mean, uh, the, only, the only place you could get a, a tortilla or a taco was Texas or California. There was none of this stuff here. And, and um, you know, we're, we're so used to now. So, uh, not, that, not that we're aging, Carla, but I'm just saying that she has worked. No, no, we're not aging. I mean, you know, no, not at all. And see, what we're saying is that there's still a lot to be learned and there's still a lot of new agencies and people that will be connecting us better with the client. As the client changes, we have to have our agencies be ready. Like Jonathan came up with a great question. You know, we have to be able to engage those types of questions and say, this is how. Because this community here, the Latino community, by the way, it, 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 everything we've said here, the largest minority now in, in our lifetimes will be that group. This is the fastest growing group. This is a group that will be a third or quarter of the total population in this country, no matter what anyone says. It's a reality. And you as a marketer or your brand has to say, we want that. We're going to make a commitment. And right now we're seeing a lot of other things that are happening with marketing dollars that, you know, I think aren't directed towards a lot of that. So without further ado, Carla Fernandez Parker, and we're going to talk about boomers. Rico? Right. Yeah. We, do we have the clicker? Here's the boomers. Hi, boomers. All right. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Um, so really happy to be here. I haven't been to Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul area for at least seven, eight years. So you guys put on some great weather for us Texans. Uh, Cause it's, I think it's a 102 in Austin today. So I'm really glad I'm here. Uh, so is it, which, which is the button? Is it the big one? There's the big one. Okay. So just a little bit about census. Um, we actually, Rick kind of stole my thunder. We just became the largest multicultural agency in this country this last year. Um, yeah, independently owned um, and so really proud to be part of the team. Um, I run the Austin office, the Texas office, kind of mainly play in this uh, center part of the United States. Um, but we have offices across the country, LA, DC, and Atlanta as well. And we're what they call a full service agency, so we kind of do soup to nuts. Um, but one of the things that Jose has really instilled in the agency is, is coming up with our own studies, doing proprietary studies, because as we all know, in doing multicultural marketing, there's always a lot of gaps. 
Um, and so we started out with um, the Hispanic Millennial Study, which even though it's called the Hispanic Millennial Study, it actually looked at Hispanics and compared Hispanics to general market to uh, the black population and the Asian population. And then we did the same thing for Gen Z. Um, and so today I'm gonna to present some of the findings from our Boomer uh, Cultures Report, but all of these can still be downloaded. So I know there was a question asked about what's important to Gen Z in terms of social responsibility or what I have on my website. There is an answer to that in that Gen Z report. Um, so over the last 10 years, and we've been doing a lot of deep diving into these cohorts. Um, and so why boomers? While wow, boomers are 71.6 million out of the United States population of what roughly 340 to 50 million people, that's a very big percent. Um, and boomers hold o almost $3 trillion in spending power. Um, and boomers are actually fairly diverse. 25% um, are Hispanic, 10% black, and 5% Asian. Um, so that's what this whole study is about. I'm not going to compare Hispanic boomers to Asian, to African American or black uh, as on this talk because it would take me a really long time and it's a lot of numbers. But I would encourage you all, if this is part of your target, to download the reports. There's a lot of great stuff there and there's a lot of great comparisons. Today I'm just going to focus on Hispanic and then I'm going to highlight some differences to general market. In our uh, methodology, um, so we, we launched this study in 2019 before the pandemic started, and then we did a second read uh, kind of in the heart of the pandemic before there were any vaccines. So we got some very interesting viewpoints on some of these, uh, these uh, topics that I'm gonna cover today. Um, and then I'm gonna augment some of what we found with a great study which is MRI Simmons, uh, and this just came out in spring of this year. So the first sort of big takeaway is that Hispanics are happy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and not only are we happy, we, compared to our other cohorts, we're actually feeling like we're where we wanna be in life, which I, I'm really overwhelmed by that number. I mean, 78%, that's a pretty high number. Um, they also feel like they've taken care of their health, which is pretty interesting too, because we have, as we know, we have high rates of diabetes and high rates of heart disease, but for whatever reason, people feel, are feeling healthy. Um, they feel like they've taken care of their family and, they're, and that they're living life to the, to the fullest. When we look at Hispanic's bucket list, um, this is pretty interesting. They, they wanna enjoy the fruits of their labor. They wanna um, maybe do some traveling, some sightseeing. Um, they want to kind of, you know, treat themselves with some luxury stuff, but they're not going on the eco-tour vacations. <laughs> they're not going kayaking. Uh, Hispanics feel healthy, as I mentioned, and to kind of do a deep dive in this compared to general market, these were totally similar. So whether you were a Hispanic boomer or a general market boomer, 90% um, said they're trying to pay attention to nutrition. Uh, they feel like older people need more vitamins. So those of you who own companies that potentially have a vitamin section, you might wanna augment that. Um, they also feel like they're looking for new ways to stay healthy. Um, they actually do what their doctor tells them. Um, they're still that generation. Uh, and they're trying to exercise regularly. But where Hispanics over-index compared to general market boomers, and this is by over 70%, um, they feel like medication has really improved the quality of their life. Makes a lot of sense. We talked about diabetes, we talked about heart disease. Those are two things that you can medicate. Um, they feel like they're fitter than other people their age. Um, and they consider that they're eating a healthy diet. So now let's talk about retirement. I, I've been sitting with Bob, and so Bob has been waiting for this slide to come up here because he, he, uh, he sells retirement stuff. Um, so are you prepared? So on average, Hispanic boomers say they start earlier than the general market to save for retirement. That's some pretty strong numbers, 51% saying by the time they're 40. 
Um, and then when it comes to how do I view retirement over time, over 50% say that 65 plus is the new 50. If you saw how good Tom Cruise looked in Top Gun, I want his plastic surgeon's name. Um, that guy's <laughs> Um, also, they feel like, this is kind of interesting, they still want to stay connected to work somehow, even though they're, they're retired. Um, and maybe that's because it could be their business, uh, or maybe it's a trade that they want to share, but I thought that was a pretty interesting number. They don't want to totally check out. Um, what have you done to prepare for retirement? So there's some pretty interesting things on this slide. Okay, so commonly they've reduced debt. They've cut their discretionary spending. They've set a retirement date strategy. That's a pretty small number, 20%. And then, to, this is for Bob, the only 20% have engaged a financial advisor. So that is a really low number. Um, while they are using these products, the retirement products at some pretty good rates, 401ks, IRAs, you'll see that hardly anyone has a pension plan. That's no big surprise. Um, now let's talk about social media. There's some pretty interesting things about Latino boomers that I think are going to break some stereotypes. Hispanic boomers are more likely to be following an influencer. Who knew? That's crazy. And, and by high numbers compared to the general market. They're also connecting with brands in social media. They are using social media as their primary source of news. Now that's kind of scary because we talked about misinformation and, and you know, bad news. Um, but that, that's a pretty high number. And they're also trusting social media more than other information sources. And they are more likely to purchase products they've seen in social media. So those are some pretty strong numbers. And it's funny because I've been doing Hispanic marketing for over 30 years and I remember the day when people used to say, oh, Hispanics, they hardly use cell phones. And it's like, what study did you see? And so even among this older cohort, we're seeing that they're very, very engaged. Um, now let's talk a little bit about shopping. Uh, when it comes to general market boomers compared to Hispanic boomers, there were a lot of similarities. They like to shop at their favorite stores. They like to do their research online before they go buy it. Um, they tend to like to buy things on sale, don't we all? Uh, and they'll hold off, actually, to wait for a sale. They also look for discount codes, so that's kind of cool. And they're, uh, they shop around for bargains. Where Hispanics uh, over-index versus general market boomers is just shopping for the sake of shopping. We've seen people at the mall. We know who's going to the mall. This is just a popular outing just to go to the mall and look around. Also looking for specialty stores where they know someone's going to be knowledgeable. Looking for the brand name is a big deal. And then sometimes they'll just check out other shops that they normally don't go to just to see, yeah, maybe there's some sales there. Some cultural themes with this group, no big surprise. Family, food, health. Uh, I think that they definitely recognize that they feel like if they have their health, they have everything. Their families are everything. And of course, we all know Latinos, we like to eat uh, and some good food. So now let's talk a little bit about media and technology habits. Similar to the general market, very heavy TV users, this cohort, we know that. We know that they're big on prime time. Uh, they're also big magazine users. And one thing that popped out um, in this study was that 99% of Hispanic boomers read AARP magazine. Wow. That is a huge, huge number. So if you're advertising to this target, yeah. you better not leave out that AARP magazine. That's, <laughs> AARP's done a very good job of marketing to yeah. Hispanics. Yes. Uh, we were, Rick and I were at the Hispanic American Marketing Council big Dallas event uh, just before the pandemic 2019. And uh, AARP was given the big award for marketer of the year because they do such a great job targeting Latinos. Mm -hmm. uh, they had this, I mean, they were case studies and just great work 
targeting uh, Spanish and English speaking Latinos. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's language, not just uh, yeah, yeah, we told, culture. We, we told them Rico and I were too young to read that magazine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I said, what? Thanks for that. Yeah, and so where, where Latino boomers over-index their general market counterparts, we know this, those of us at market, in this market, we know that we're heavy radio users, so we see that a lot, and also heavy Spanish TV. Remember, this is the older segment that a lot of them are still speaking Spanish, still relying on Spanish, so unlike some of the comments earlier where we know Gen Z is not Spanish dominant. We've had a very slowdown in immigration in America, contrary to what the news is telling us. Um, there just haven't been the number of people coming as in uh, generations past. When we look at Hispanic boomers, were they similar again? Um, definitely, this is really important because I have heard it so many times that multicultural consumers are not technically engaged. And even among this group, they're just as engaged as a general market, and those are pretty high numbers. They also use, uh, are using reviews, and uh, they like to buy tech products that easily connect with other products that they already have. Don't we all trying to get that remote to work? <laughs> uh, and then when it, <laughs> yeah, when it comes to cable, again, we talked about, again, there's a lot of discrepancies like, oh, Hispanics don't have money, well, it's the same subscription rate on cable as the general market. So these are some definitely uh, some stereotype breakers that, that we're seeing. Um, but then where boomers that are Hispanic over-index the general market, it's definitely in using the computer. So that's another one where people say, oh, well, people don't even have computers in the household. Well, we know for a fact that, that this is happening. And we also know that they're big YouTube users. So that's a pretty significant, that have been on YouTube in the last 30 days. And we also know this group is embracing TikTok. So there's, so there's sort of that whole, like, wow, I think Hispanic boomers are kind of hip, if you ask me. <laughs> um, so just to kind of conclude, um, what we know is that Hispanic boomers, they're optimistic. I, I'm looking at this data and I think they're optimistic because they didn't hire a financial planner. <laughs> I'm just saying because if you do, because I know I have a financial planner and I'm not that optimistic. So I'm just saying. Uh, but they do feel like they're ready, but they want to still engage, you know, with, they're not going to go run away and not see their family and they still seem to want to somehow have a, t a foot in the water at work. Um, I think there's a huge opportunity about this healthy lifestyle thing because it just really resonated that they are interested in products and services to help them stay healthy. Um, and I already mentioned the financial advisor gap, um, but I think <coughs> anything that you do to this target, including social media, is, is critical. Um, and, but you can't overlook the traditional media. You know, this is the group of consumers that will put that radio on and have the radio on all day and they're listening to talk shows or they're listening to, you know, a Christian music or whatever it is that they, that they find, but they're very engaged definitely with, with radio and with still Spanish TV. So that's it. Um, are there any questions? Any boomer questions? Not, not a question, but um, more of a comment. It, you know, it's funny, as you're going through these points, I was like, man, this describes my parents. <laughs> but the the parts about um, computer usage, and then go back one slide real quick. Um, I think I go. I think it's that one. Yeah. So the the healthy lifestyle piece. Um, Let me keep going. Yeah, I I just dis, I distinctly remember seeing my parents in the last couple of years that I visited them. They like using their desktop computer for. Oh you know, setting up music in the house or, you know, watching YouTube videos on that or whatever, because it's, it's easier to see, it's, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but the, the healthy lifestyle thing is interesting, because I remember my parents being like, oh yeah, let's try the South Beach Jet, let's try the Atkinson Jet, let's, let's try this, let's try that. Like, they're always interested in hearing how, you know, how they could make their lifestyle more healthy. And yeah, you know, it, it just that that reminded me of a lot of things as you went through that. Cool.
Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Gary? Anyone? Ray? Yeah, I, I, I know this was boomers, but if you could expand it to other generations as well. Did the data show how Hispanics defined the American dream? So we asked a ton of questions on that. I didn't bring that today, um, but there was a lot. Like, like basically, we asked all kinds of questions about if they felt like they were living the American dream in terms of their finances or in terms of their quality of life and all of that's in there. There's a ton. And we did the same thing for Gen Z and Millennial. And you can get it by language. So there was a lot of breakouts. And I'm happy to give you my card and yeah. Yeah, I think he was next, sorry. So you mentioned a little bit about Christian music in there. Did you have a, do any research relative to faith and how that uh, impacted within those communities? Um, I'm trying to remember if the boomers did. Um, I know in the millennial one for sure we did, but I don't remember if on boomers we did or not. I just, I do a lot of stuff in that space. I'm a consultant in that space, and so I, I'm pretty attuned to, you know, that. we. We know for a fact that older generations are the ones that are still going to church, and it's the younger generations that are now defining spirituality. They call it the nuns, that you're not necessarily affiliated with a mainline religion. So there's a whole bunch of great stuff on that, and that's a lot of that's in the Pew research. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. I think somebody over here had a question. So then is this available? Yeah, so you can, I'm going to go back to that. You can download the Boomer, some of the Boomer reports. We, we give them out for free. And the same thing with Millennial and the same thing with the Gen Z. Okay. So they're available, like if you go to our website, or yeah, if you go to censusagency.com, okay. but you can also go directly to Boomers. Yeah. You know what, we're also developing a video here, as you can see with our cameras. Are. So this... This whole presentation will be available, I, I would say, within a week. We'll email to anyone who wants it. We'll just email to everyone. So you can share that with you, too. Uh, it's very well done, uh, this, uh, this um, SPNN crew. So we present this picture to non latinos Are they getting more comfortable with this information or uncomfortable? I mean, in what context? Like, are you saying like that that maybe they didn't think that b his Latino boomers were as technology savvy as they are? Is that what you mean? Like, well, yes, that was so like dispelling some myths. It's, it's funny when this guy Barack was running the first time. Ooh. Some guy named Barack. Um, the <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the Democratic Party here was very resistant to us telling them that we needed to run our campaign on cell phones and not on uh, Latino billboards and signage. So anybody who said like, well, you gotta put the message in that. No, we said no, because every person here uh, had a cell phone yeah. before they even had a home phone. So That's right. You couldn't, you couldn't even go to their doors, so they wouldn't answer the doors. But it was very powerful. It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. We had to beat up the Democrats and say, don't be stupid. Yeah. But, uh, and I, I can see how it would carry over into commercial. Yeah, and it, and it carries over even in terms of the, like, I just have an article, a column that I do in Media Post, and I just wrote an article this last week about this very topic, about the fact that that total market strategy, how it misses so many multicultural consumers. And, you know, Trinidad went through that earlier, but... It's, it's also in these stereotypes like that. It's the fact that you're thinking, oh, these are my mediums, and this is who I'm going to reach with these mediums, and then not understanding that you're actually, you need to fine tune your message, you know? But my question is about the reaction of the non-Hispanic decision maker uh, reacting to the information that says, oh, wait a minute, they are ahead of the general population in consumption of digital media and it's inc incorporation into their life. And also, they're not poo-poo customers. They, you know, uh, it, it, it's a Chevy, but it, it's better than a Cadillac. Um, the, uh, the optimism of the Latino, uh, is it threatening to the executive decision makers in corporations when they read the information? 
I mean, I think the, the problem is, is what was brought up over here is that it's back to having the champion. And it just, the more I've done this, the more I see that it always comes down to somebody being at that corporation yeah. that's willing to lead this and own it yeah. and, and, and sort of put the skin in the game on it. Because otherwise it's just, it's too difficult for a lot of these companies. They're not as diverse as they need to be. And they just, they're just doing whatever's the flavor of the month and not necessarily thinking about their consumer base. Uh, unfortunately, we see that a lot. Yeah. Are we good? Okay. Well, don't go anywhere. Today, uh, I'm, you know, pleased and honored that we have our recipient for our Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award, and I'm so happy to say that it's Carla Fernandez Parker. Yeah. And, and, here, and here's the award. It's uh, the Hispanic Marketing Award Committee and Aguilar Productions are honored to present the Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award to Carla Fernandez Parker, a managing director of Census Texas, in recognition of your outstanding leadership in the development of the Hispanic marketing industry in the United States. Carla, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Can you get a photo of you, but I'm not one for speeches. So. <laughs> but I did write a couple of notes because this is very touching for me. Um, well, first off, I just want to say thank you to Rick and, and your team and, and to the committee. I, it's, it's really an honor and obviously a privilege um, to get this award. I'm standing in some, some big boots before me and um, wow, so thank you for that. Um, just a, a couple of things I wanted to say of how I got to this journey because uh, I know some of you are looking at me and is she white or is she Hispanic? <laughs> um, and so I'm actually part, part. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a mix. Uh, Heinz 57, whatever you want to call yourself. Um, but, uh, you know, I grew up on the, on the border with Mexico. I'm from Brownsville, Texas. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And you know the thing about Brownsville is it's it's a it's an interesting place when you're from the border. Um, you know there is no such thing as not being Hispanic. Um, it, I think when I was growing up it was like 80 something percent Hispanic, but now we're over 95 percent Hispanic in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and it just it, you sort of I think that you know the point is it is part of your life, the culture's part of your life, and you grow up with a lot of traditions, and you don't even realize that these traditions, like other people aren't, we, other people don't have charro days, like, <laughs> other people don't hit piñatas, like the, there's things that you grow up doing and you don't even realize it, but but it, 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 was a, it was a humbling place to grow up, it's the poorest market in the United States, and I, I tell people, like, when you are from a place like that, it just prepares you for life. It prepares you to be thankful. It prepares you to um, enjoy the small things, and and I, I think to be grateful, you know, for the opportunity that my parents sent six of us to college. I mean, and and they paid for it, you know, and that's pretty unbelievable. Um, but my journey to Hispanic marketing started out with you know watching Spanish TV and and just sort of looking at people and saying, those people like live in a high rise in Mexico City and they all have green eyes. <laughs> I don't know anyone in those ads who looks like my family or my friends around me or anything. And so from an early age, I recognized that. And then there was the blaring you know, music from Mexico because we get all those Mexican radio stations and they're like 20 times more powerful than the ones on the US side. And so you can't even like change your dial and get rid of them, I mean, they're just all there, you know? <laughs> so, so I recognized that a lot of that music and things, it wasn't who we were, you know, growing up in South Texas. So my dad was an avid Wall Street Journal reader. And in 1983, this is for real, in 1983, he cut 
this article out, and it was about a man named Lionel Sosa. And Lionel Sosa is one of the godfathers of Hispanic marketing. And they had just won the Coca-Cola account. So they had, all of a sudden, there was this new industry, and they were, you know, groundbreaking. And I still have that article in my drawer in my office. It, it's a little tattered, and it's turning yellow, but I still have it. So I was in seventh grade. And I decided in seventh grade that I could do a better job than these general market agencies were doing all over the country. And that I knew the culture and I knew the market. And I told my dad, I said, I'm going to go work for Lionel Sosa one day. And so I graduated from college and I went to New York for a couple of years. And then two years later, I had a friend of a friend give my resume to Lionel Sosa. And those of us who know Lionel Sosa, he said, I found this out after the fact. He said, she sounds really, really nice. <laughs> he kind of talks like this, you know. And, and I thought it was the coolest thing. And lo and behold, I got the interview, and then I got the job. Um, and I never looked back, and I worked for those guys for five years. And then I said, you know, I, th I think my dad was an entrepreneur. I'm like, I think I could do this myself. And so I put my shingle out, and I literally had no clients. I had no prospects, and I bootstrapped it. And, um, and I had a great ride, 18 years, and then I decided that the market had really changed. We talked about earlier about digital. Yeah. You know, you talked about how digital, we talked about how digital kind of misses the Hispanic mark, and the dollars just really have dried up. Um, but multicultural is sort of the new thing, and folding Hispanic into a multicultural strategy. So I went to work for one of the best agencies in the country, which is Census. And I brought all my clients with me. They all gladly came. And that's where I've been the last seven years. And it's been, you know, a, a, lo a really great place to work. And nice. So, yeah, I mean, I, I remember early on, like, it always seemed like we were fighting for dollars. And we're still fighting for dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, 40 years into the inception of Hispanic marketing, as we know it, we are still fighting for dollars. So... Those of you who have companies, those of you who know someone who has a company, those of you who run agencies, to just be mindful of the fact that this is a super important market. And I think oftentimes it's, it's really taken for granted. Um, so that was my little soapbox. Well. And then, and then we have to congratulate you also because now you're on the selection committee. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so next year, yeah, next year I'll, you'll be the first one I call.